Welcome to Just Want a Quilt, a research podcast coming out of Tulane University Law School, where we explore all kinds of things, stories about quilting, tools, field trips, maybe some famous quilters stop by, and of course, a little bit of copyright thrown in just for fun. I'm Elizabeth Townsend Gard, your host, and I just want a quilt. So today we're talking to Asta Dees. She is part of the stencil company. She is the third generation of Stencil Company. We have interviewed her grandfather, Hollis Turnbow, um, Turnbow, and her mom, Cynthia Turnbow, and now the daughter. So um, Asta grew up in the quilting industry. Um, she is an artist. She has uh, another sort of uh, company um, that does some printing of whole cloth materials. She works at the Stencil Company. She was really fun. I hope you enjoy this interview, part three of the Stencil Company family business. And seeing if that works. So is this okay? Yeah. Uh, Can you hear me? Is this good on your end? I can. Okay, Mm -hmm. cool. And you're cool with us recording and having us part of the podcast? Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. (laughs) Well, I am so excited to be interviewing you because I've interviewed your mom and your grandfather, right? Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> yes, like the whole family. It's going to be awesome. I'm really psyched. It's the whole so family. Cool. Yeah, I know. Uh, your your mom was suggesting we also um, interview the three year old. <laughs> uh, you know, she would have a lot to say. Actually, I imagine she knows a lot. <laughs> three year olds are very smart. <laughs> they are. That's very funny. Well, welcome. Thank you so much for um, chatting. And I know it's um, we're doing it in the evening, and um, it's. That's special time, so I really do appreciate it. Absolutely. No problem. Um, Okay, let me get back to my list. So what we're going to do is um, I'm going to ask you a basic question, and then we're going to go from there. I would love to chat with you. Hold on. Let me get back to your – I have a thing for you. Okay. Um, I'd love to talk to you about your life in a quilting family. That's, I mean, in a quilting sure. comp. So, like growing up, and and also your design stuff, and um, your so and social media. Um, and I'd love to chat with mm-hmm. you um, about also. Do you have the Harris House Designs? I'd love to chat with you more about that too. If that... Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Awesome. All right. Sounds so. Good. Um, we're going to try to go for about a half an hour if that works for you. It sometimes goes longer because people just, we find things to talk about, but we're going to shoot for about a half an hour. If that okay. That sounds great. Okay, cool. Um, okay. So we're going to start with the first question. Um, this is, these are going to be preserved by the Quilt Alliance as well. So we're making sure that every recording has information about who you are. So even though I know who you mm-hmm. are, can you tell me your name and where you're calling from today? Sure. My name's Asta Deese, and I'm calling from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Awesome. And if we have any recording issues, I'll let you know. We'll just stop. Um, and then if we if it gets weird, either call back or, you know, we'll just worry, worry about the sound as it goes. So it, it should be okay. fine. Okay. Sounds But good. I'll interrupt you if somehow I can see on the side if it's starting to get weird. So, okay. Okay. All right. So tell me your first memory of someone in your life sewing or quilting or maybe like you have no memory of it like it just always was in your life <laughs> like do you, uh, do you have a specific first memory um, of, of that gosh my first memory um I can remember my mom making clothes for me she made a lot of clothes and the first memories I have of quilting is actually quilt shows because yeah. mom was a single mom and she took me to quilt shows with her when she was ending. And um, so from the time, I think my first quilt show was when I was like a few months old wow. <laughs> and um, I would go with her to quilt shows. And then when I got a little bit older, like five, six, seven, uh, my grandfather um, and my grandmother would do the quilt shows and uh, they would take me with them sometimes to the shows. So really my first memories of quilting are being in a booth and being around quilters and, you know, seeing the quilts and everything um, and, and kind of being immersed in the business side of it. Yeah. From from forever. That's really interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. And did did your mom make you or your grandparents make you help out in the booth, or were you just sort of coloring and hanging out? Or as you got older, did they give you 
Like I can imagine making my daughter do a lot of things if <laughs> if I was traveling. Oh, with her. yeah, I definitely did a lot. Um, there's a big joke in my family that when I was about 10 years old, people would come in the booth and ask for help, my help to pick out stencils and uh, they would get their quilt out and say, can you give me some advice on this? And I was 10 years old. Right. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> you know, but I, I, I guess I had some authority uh, on it at that point. Right. Um, I guess I gave good advice at least. But uh, yeah, no, I definitely did things. Um, I would run the cash register. I'd ring people out. Uh, it's just kind of always been something that's been part of my life. I think that's one of the beauties of having a family business yeah. is that when you grow up in it, it doesn't seem unusual and it doesn't necessarily seem like work. It just seems like a part of your life. Yeah. So that's, that's my early memories. And I actually, I, I grew up as a quilt show kid. So all the other vendors were kind of my extended family Aww. and the quilt teachers and, and even the customers. There's been people I've seen since I was a little kid and I've really grown up with them. That's so really it's, cool. it was kind of a special thing to have. We joke that it's like a circus family. Yeah. You know, you, you travel around in a caravan to all the different cities. Well, they, they were kind of my circus family. That's very so. sweet. And were there other circus kids yeah. or just you? There was a few. Uh, it was probably at the the high point. I would say there's maybe six or seven of us, and I think I'm the only one who's still in the industry. Really? Some of the other ones will help their parents occasionally, but I'm the only person that's doing it full time still. That's really interesting. Um, so tell me, okay, so yeah. you did you um, were you in regular school or were you out of school when you were doing this? Well, I was in regular school, uh, but I would do quilt shows in the summer, and I would travel around, at, you know, when school was out yeah. and, and do the quilt shows. But Interesting. Regular school. And so did you like quilting when you were a kid, or were you, like, not interested in it because you were – it was so much of I, your life? I did enjoy it as a little kid. I uh, I would make little quilts, and um, I would sew things when I was a kid. I really enjoyed it, and it was definitely encouraged uh, in my family. Yeah. for me to try it out and there was always scraps of fabric and I always had access to sewing machines and needles and thread so it was something that was kind of easy as I got older I I guess all kids rebel in a certain way <laughs> and my rebellion was that <laughs> I wasn't going to go into quilting I was going to go do something completely different right. so uh, I actually I went to college for art so fine art and um, I went and got my my bachelor's in uh, painting, and then I went and got my master's in sculpture. And towards the end of my master's program, when I was starting to work on my thesis, I started using more and more fabric in my sculptures. <laughs> and oh, no. my, my thesis <laughs> exhibition, it ended up, yeah, it ended up being an entire exhibition of sewn sculptures. And I was like, oh, I'm back here. <laughs> you know, it just comes full circle. And as much as you try, you know, right. that was my life. I grew up with it. So right. it just made sense for me to come back to it um, in some way. So yeah. I guess I just gave in, and, and here I am. <laughs> All right, so a couple of questions, but I want to do a little offshoot. Did you, so I've talked to your grandfather and your mom. Did your grandmother yeah. quilt at all, or was it just your grandfather quilting? Uh, my grandmother did not quilt. She sewed. I can remember her sewing, uh, but no, not not really a quilter. Interesting. Yeah, I just had – it was kind of a – she was like a phantom in the background, so I was curious. Yeah. Um, okay, so tell me what you do now. Uh, well, so now I work full time for the stencil company. Um, I handle kind of the day to day office management type stuff, but um, I really concentrate on the internet presence, our website, our social media, um, advertising related to online. That, that's kind of my specialty with the stencil company. And then I have my own company called Harrison House Designs, where I do uh, production, wholesale. Uh, printing for teachers and uh, shops of uh, water erasable uh, panel, yeah. basically for whole cloth quilting. Right. Um, and then my husband and I also run a, a pottery studio, so oh, that's oh, cool. that's our other that's our other baby. <laughs> that's really cool. Okay, so let's take them step by step. So, in terms of social media okay. and the stencil company, tell me how important is it for a company now? to be focused on the social media aspect of the company? I think it's very important, especially if we're going to attract a new generation of quilters. Um, quilters 
for the most part, are of an older generation. Um, and I think that we're starting to see that generation get smaller. And so it's really important for us to be able to attract younger people, um, you know, attracting people in their 20s and 30s that are then going to be lifelong consumers, you know, of our products. Yeah. Uh, so I think that concentrating on social media is really important. Um, one of the one of the really ironic things I think about social media is that even though it's made us more disconnected and that we're not having as much face-to-face interaction with people anymore, it actually as a business makes us more human to our customers because we have this, this personality that they can see um, that it's not just like a cut and dry. Here's our catalog and here's our product. It's, it's that we're people too. And, and we can interact with our customers on more of a, a personal basis. Uh, I was joking the other day, we have an Instagram um, that I handle. And whenever I post pictures of our product, we get a lot of likes and we get a lot of interest. But whenever I post pictures of my kids in the office, we get like double the likes and double this (laughs) and people just think it's adorable. Oh, your three-year-old pulled my order, your five-year-old cat, my pencil. It it makes it real to them, you know, and then we'll get who will call to place orders and they'll say, oh, I saw your Instagram post. Is that the little one I hear in the background? Really and great. so I think that that really goes a long way towards reaching out to customers to let them know, you know, one of the pluses of a small business is that we're people. Um, you know, you're, you're going to deal with the same person at the show that you deal with at the office. And, you know, we are the company. There's two of us. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah. I think social media in that regard is so important, you know, creating this kind of persona for our business that lets people know who we are, yeah. uh, but also just the, the instantaneousness of it, that we can put a sale up and it can be a flash sale that's good for the next three hours. And then, you know, we can reach 10,000 people really Amazing. easily. So um, that's, it's immediate and it's nice. And how hard has it been? Been so we're brand new, right? This is a, we're on our fourth week. <laughs> we're like brand new podcast. Oh wow! Uh, right, we're brand new. Wow. So, um, how hard was it to build your base of social, your social media base, as opposed to is it is it different than your customer base, and is it different than was it harder to do it, or is it did you have a different strategy in terms of building your social media base? Well. Um, we are a small company, as you know, it's really just two of us. Um, and so we didn't necessarily have the, the people to, um, to really put on a a big production of our social media. You know, some of these companies that can actually hire a social media manager can, can do a little bit more with it. This is kind of something that when we have an extra hour at the end of the day or in the morning, we'll get on there and we'll post something. So it's definitely been a bit of a slower build for us than some other companies would be. But I think that we've also tried to keep our social media presence really genuine. Um, You can go out there and you can buy likes on your page. You can you pay companies to send bots through your page and, you know, increase your readership and all that kind of stuff. So we didn't go that route. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we just kind of organically built an audience based on our customers and based on, um, you know, sending out newsletters and, and advertising, you know, that we had these social media. So it's definitely been a little slower growing for yeah. us. But I feel like the base that we do have is a really strong, good base that we have really great interactions with. Um, Personally, I like Instagram best because I think quilting is such a visual medium that being able to interact with our customers in that visual way has been really good. And something that we really encourage customers to do is when they're posting their projects or their quilts, you know, tasks in it because we like to see what you're doing. Yeah. We like to see our product up there in the world. So that's been really cool for us to be able to see projects and also interacting with customers that are overseas. You know, a lot of our international customers, we never really had any contact with. And now on a daily basis, you know, we're, we're getting tagged in their photos. Oh, I got my order in Australia today. Um, So I I think that's, that's really broadened our audience, you know, and our audience reach that way. So um, I, you know, I think it's been a really positive thing for our company in, in that regard. Do you find that the um, the younger there's so much um, like DIY stuff and like like 
um, projects like you do, do you find that people are using your stencils, like particularly the younger generation, in things other than quilting? I think so. We get a lot of 